What's going on? This is Kext Next, and today I'm going to show you how you can create Jello and Blender with Soft Body Physics System super quickly. Um, if you want a more in depth tutorial about lighting and rendering and materials, I suggest going and checking out my photorealistic Jello and Blender tutorial. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Also, I would like to leave a link to Touch by Kai's Soft Body Physics Systems tutorial for beginners. Um, it's super great, super easy to understand, um, but we're just going to kind of run through it here as well. So I already have a scene set up here, so let's go ahead and move our cube. Just hit G on the keyboard and then Z to move it along the Z axis, and then G and then Y to move it back a little bit. Um, and we just want to kind of position it so that it has some room to fall and tumble to allow it to jiggle like jello would. So let's go ahead and give it some a little bit of random rotation too. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply our physics systems. So let's select the plane and apply a collision system and that'll allow the cube to actually interact with the plane instead of just falling right through to the other side. Now let's go to the cube and apply a soft body physics simulation. Now, if we were to press play, the cube would just bob up and down in midair. And so to make it actually interact with gravity, let's turn off the goal checkbox right here. And we control down the edges option. Now, if we hit play, you can see it will just kind of be squashed because it only has about eight vertices. Uh, and we need to uh, fix the actual soft body settings. Um, before we do that though, let's go ahead and set our timeline to start at frame zero. And we can even trim it while we're at it as well. All right, so let's go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode and make sure all of the vertices on your cube are selected by pressing A on the keyboard and then I'll just make sure everything is selected there. Uh, and right click and hit subdivide and do it again and maybe even one more time. So we have a lot of faces and edges and vertices to work with here. Now if we hit tab and we hit play, our cube gets squashed. And that's not what we want, it just folds up. So let's go ahead and turn up the bending amount, which allows the edges along the cube to bend and spring back up. And if we hit play, we can see what it's doing. All right, so maybe turn that value up a little bit more. The damping settings determine how springy the jello is. So maybe we can turn it down a little bit and it will make the jello more springy. The push and pull settings determine how much force is being applied to the faces between the edges, um, giving them that jiggly effect. So you wanna kind of mess with these settings as well. The higher they are, the more stiff uh, the faces are going to be. So if we press play now, our jello kind of springs back. So let's go ahead and right click on the cube and hit shade smooth. And we can also go to the modifiers tab and apply a subdivision surface uh, modifier just to give it more faces and make it look a little bit more smooth. Um, Turn this up to two. The more, the more that you turn this modifier up, the more, uh, the better it's gonna look. Maybe even two, yeah, this looks pretty good. And you'll notice that as we kind of change these settings around, um, every single time we'll have to re-render the cube. And to fix that, we have to do something called baking the animation, which I actually go over in my more in-depth video, link in the description. But for now, we'll just go over to the physics settings, go to cache in the soft body dynamics, um, and just hit current cache to bake. And now you can't actually adjust any more settings on the cube or the position or anything, but we no longer have to re-render out the animation, which is good for us. So let's go over materials. So let's go ahead and go into rendered view. So when you have a cube like this, it's not see-through. So let's go ahead and set that material up. So select your cube and go to the materials tab. And in here, you should already have a material on your cube and the principled shader should be applied. So just scroll down to the transmission and turn it all the way up. And you kind of see your cube is not yet see-through, um, but that's because we're not using the Cycles render engine. So go over to your render properties and change the render engine to Cycles. I like to set my device to GPU because I have a good GPU in my computer and it's faster. But now, as you can see, our cube is a little bit see-through, but it looks like frosted glass and that doesn't look good. So let's go back to the material settings and turn the roughness down so we get those really sharp looking uh, reflections from the lights. There we go, now we have a glass cube. And to adjust the actual color of it, you can go over here to the base color and just change the color of the cube. Now, this is pretty cool and all, but in my thumbnail, I had a rainbow cube and you might be asking, well, how did you do that? Well, I went over to the shading workspace up here 
and we have our little cube here and I created a new node. So hit shift A to create a new node and go to texture and then gradient texture. And this is all fun in games, but it won't really do much if you just connect this to the base color. It'll give you, I think, a black and white gradient. Yeah, and that's pretty lame. So let's go ahead and hit shift A and search and search for a color ramp right here. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas because we can edit this gradient. So now we can go through and give this color ramp more nodes by hitting this little add button and changing the colors to the colors of a rainbow, which we all know are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, Roy G. Biv. And I will just fast forward as I do that. All right, so you can see I've set up this little gradient ramp here um, with all of the colors of a rainbow. We have a rainbow cube. So let's go ahead and go to the layout tab up top again, and we can go back to our camera settings. Um, and we can hit in on the keyboard, go to view, lock camera to view and rotate around it a little bit. Maybe this looks pretty good. We are in business and you can just render this out as an image. I go over rendering and texturing more in detail in my other video. So I would appreciate if you guys check that out. I will, I slow down a little bit and explain a little bit more than I do in this video. Um, but this was meant to be a quick, you know, uh, one and done video. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you like my content. Leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions or if you liked this video. Thank you so much. I am Kext Next, and I will see you in another video.